So it's a beautiful morning here in southern Iowa here today guys and uh, we are going to be putting our sparky hats on here today. Uh, we're going to be working towards or in this video we will include we are going to be bringing in three phase power for our grain bin projects. Working with GSI to bring you guys this content this year. Well I guess I could really describe it as the content that I looked for uh, when we started this project. In one of the first videos I did with GSI, it was the eight steps in considering a location for a grain bin project. And one of those considerations was as if there was three phase power nearby, um, and there was, and that's why we removed a short section of trees. Don't worry, unfortunately, the rest of the trees are still there. So I contacted Cheriton Valley Electric, which is the electrical co-op that has the power for this location, and asked them what are my options. They said one of two things that you can do. You can come across the road all the way and have power lines above the ground. I didn't like that idea. Too much tall equipment, augers, things getting moved around here. That seemed like a little bit of a safety deal. So the better thing for me, without a doubt, was to bury the power. So the three-phase power is actually going to come in and get set on a transformer right here. So pull across the road, buried from the road all the way over to the transformer, safe for us, right? Well, before they bring in the power, we've got to get a pad poured here. And what we're going to be working on today is trying to bury some conduits through the bin pads here. And stub them out in a couple of locations out here for future development of this bin site. That way, we don't have to redig the power. You can easily put power into the transformer when you want to it's a little bit of a heads up planning. Chris from Electrical Evolution will be here shortly. I'll introduce him. We'll talk about the differences in between single phase and three phase a little bit, the advantages of a three phase over a single phase, and it sounds complicated, but it's, it, it's complicated. And also in the video today, we're gonna to talk about the financial ramifications of a project like this on a young guy like me and how I think it's a good investment. So this is Chris. Chris, you want to introduce your business here a little yep. bit? Chris with Electrical Evolution. Where are you out of? Memphis, Missouri. And what kind of area do you service? All ag agricultural, solar, residential, commercial. We do it all. He's been doing the projects so far on this site here. And then I think you've done one or two other projects for my dad, haven't you? Oh yeah. Yeah, it does yeah. really clean electrical work. It's like definitely we've really liked what he's done so far. So can you tell YouTube or the people in kind of layman's terms what's the difference between a three-phase power and single phase power and why it's kind of important or a nicety yeah. to have three phase in a site like yeah. this. Uh, single phase power, all your motors take capacitors to get started and running. They pull more juice, more uh, higher amperage. When you go to three phase, there's no capacitors involved. It's direct power to the motors and you're looking at less amperage higher voltage and it's easier on stuff easier on everything runs and, better more efficient yep and so it, right. plus it gives us the ability to expand easier over a single phase yep. system because we can carry more power yep. so if you really want to see how three phase works uh, i'll find a youtube video and i'll link it down below it, uh, i'll explain three phase but essentially we're bringing in there's two different types of three phases correct there's the we're getting the industrial three phase which is yep. the 277 480 that's the higher voltage yep and then what's the other voltage that you can get 240 volt 240 volt and so when we're going with the 277 it's going to be a little bit of an issue for things in the future because we'll have to have a or some type of transformer or a something step like down a step transformer down to get to 120 240 volt yep. single phase. so if we want to run light switches or light bulbs and stuff like that but for us at this yeah. project why I decided to go with that is it should be even easier on the motors 
and have more juice for future projects and then my dad's actually going to keep his single face service to this bin site so we really don't have to worry about uh getting 110 we can actually take it off of his service so i think that's time to get to work now you know chris so uh and his brother hanging out over there working hard <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to work all right bed in, level this back up, or just leave it like that for now? Just open. Leave it like that for now. Oh, yeah. Open. Did, uh, where did you get some of this foundation right here? No, it was a rock. Oh. I don't know if you can get on the angle right here and just kind of straight from where it's kind of cut into here. Oh, yeah, I probably can. Okay, so the trenches are dug. This one's going to be the service coming in, which is the big pipe here. Uh, this is, again, where the transformer is going to be. The only thing that we're going to actually need for the project or this bin project right now is the one that we're going to run up here along this bin wall because the fan's going to be right here for the bin and the panel is going to be on this side as well. So what we're just doing for kind of a think of a head deal, which is what you want to do with these projects, is that we're going to run four services through this trench here, which are those pipes laying right there on the ground. But you can run 200 amps through each one of those, which will allow us to do a grain leg in the future, a dryer in the future, other bins in the future, without having to come back in here and go into the transformer. It's already going to have pipes in there, so it's just a little planning ahead is what we're doing here.
So there we go. The pad is formed. Um, so the main surface will come in here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. Basically that we can send out 200 amps through each one of those. Again, four of those tubes were ran to this spot right here. So this is for future growth at this bin site. Uh, can dig down, tie on to them really easily. Being stay safe, staying away from there. And then one of those uh, services has been ran here along the edge of the bin and been stubbed up there. <laughs> and when we were digging, uh, I'm almost wondering if the concrete crew happens to be missing one of their hammers. Sheraton Valley's been out here marking where it's coming, coming off of this pole over there to a pole here, digging down. They'll tie into this service right here, so we'll redo um, this area. Which means that pretty much next thing I gotta do is uh, pour the concrete there, but that's gonna be in a day or so. So. We're formed up, we've got the green light, and uh, three phase will be moving in here shortly. Well guys, let's take a second here and talk about why me at 30 years old view investing in a grain facility like this as a good investment uh, going into the future. And to be clear about things here, this is my grain bin that I am building, but the ground that we're on is my dad's. And other than some rock, which is getting spent on the driveways actually here, which that'll be in another video for you guys. The investment this year is coming out of my pocket. Well, that in the, the bank's pocket. And it's a little bit windy out right now, so we're gonna sit in the hay shed so you guys have good quality audio, because I think that this is actually a pretty good subject to talk about, um, which, which helped me make my decision on actually making these investments. If you ever happen to be on GSI's website, there's actually a number of articles that actually help aid in these decisions and the decision-making process about what you want to do for a grain facility and the return on invest. But when you make an investment, especially as a young farmer, there's actually a lot of places that you can invest your money, but usually the amount of resources that you can invest every year uh, is quite limited, and you've got to make a decision in between Project A, Project B, and Project C, and where you think the most return is going to be and help you out in the future. Which means that you also have to have some predictions about what you think is going to happen in the future. And my prediction is, is that there's going to be less farmers like me uh, carrying on, which means that we're going to have to farm more ground, faster, more efficient, and things like that. Now there might be things that will aid in that. The equipment will continue to get bigger and or smaller with the use of robotics, AI, drones, things like that to really pump out the number of acres that we can accomplish in a day. But the one thing that remains true about that is that we are still going to have to be able to handle the grain uh, that we produce as farmers. Which way we do it? future will tell. So to me, the investment in a grain facility, it's not something that's going to be all obsolete in five to ten years. Now all said and done, I got a loan this year to do this facility. Um, there are some options that you can get low interest rate loans through uh, the FSA office and stuff like that. I did not do that. I realistically thought that this project was going to come in somewhere around $80,000 but all in, we're going to be actually quite a bit closer to $90,000 this year with the three phase being brought in and the rock and the grain bin. So we're going to be about 10% over budget. Go figure, right? <laughs> Where do I see the return at? That's the big question. And I can only really speak for us. And the biggest one for us is going to be time. So what that means is, especially in the future, uh, if we can get a dryer put in here, is that we can harvest whenever we want. We can have the ability to harvest earlier when the moisture on the corn is a little bit higher. Um, yes, that you can avoid phantom loss a little bit in there, and there's a calculator on that on the website too. Um, but more or less, get in the field earlier, the corn's standing better, the days are longer, the weather is nicer, and you don't have to harvest when the elevator's open. This past week, if you happen to be anywhere around southern Iowa and you take car, uh, corn to Cargill, uh, they've been having some serious issues keeping their hours open um, because they're having maintenance issues. So that really affects your ability to harvest grain and get in there because if you don't have anywhere to take your grain and you can't store it because it's too wet, those are days that harvest uh, isn't happening when it should be happening. Right now, we honestly should be shelling corn today, but uh, we don't have anywhere to go with it because our corn moisture right now is still hanging out there around the 20%. A little bit breezy today. Hopefully that helps things out. And then the other big kicker part of the time for us 
is actually the sooner we can get harvest done, the faster we can get into the field doing land improvement projects and land improvement projects have had a really high rate of return for us over the past few years. So that's also kind of conjoining in to this grain bin investment, which then I can also link back to a prediction for the future where farmers are going to have to farm more acres and they aren't going to make more days in the growing season. So you're just going to have to shove more in to those seasons. So therefore, that's why for me, this investment for time was my biggest consideration. But there are some other considerations for the return on investments for a grain facility. And if you are considering making an investment in a grain facility, again, I highly suggest you just go uh, to the website, maybe watch some of my YouTube videos that I've done for you guys. That's what I'm trying to make in these videos is a good resource for the considerations for what you're wanting to do when you build a grain bin facility. Am I an expert? No, I'm not, but I have partnered with GSI to bring you these videos and they are experts and they've lent me a lot of knowledge. Other than just the time factor and the return on the investment because money is time, uh, or time is money, however you want to say that, you know, if it's an equal, I think you can flip them either way around, whatever you want to do. But you can learn about the carrying in the market, which means sell the grain at the optimal time when the elevators really want it. You can learn about the cost of drying your grain, and then you can learn about things like phantom yield loss, and then also the other things that we all know is that the later you get into the season, the higher risk you have of your corn going down. And especially like for us, we were in a drought this year, our plant health is just not not as good as it should be so corn lodging this year is a is a pretty big risk you might be asking yourself ben well, well then why aren't you putting in a dryer this year well for us right now the biggest return on investment is actually the storage of the grain that's what i need to focus on but there is a plan for the future developments of this project which i will be sharing with you guys at the end of the series of this grain facility building project but anyways, guys, enough financial ramblings and why I see that this is a really good investment for me moving out forward into the future and a good investment for our farm moving forward into the future. So let's get back to work and uh, move along with this project. Ah, so the 0.6 of a yard is poured. Andrew's here, the secret sauce. I'm not a concrete guy. Andrew used to work on a concrete crew, so he's taking the reins a little bit on this one. Poured it. Don't be an idiot like me and forget to pull up your wire. And so you gotta hurry up and drop more down in. Um, that's, that's a rookie mistake. Just like a walk out memory lane, just doing one small little pad like this a year to kind of like. Yeah, well, that's all right. Any bigger than this, and it'd be considered a nightmare. This is about as big of a project as we'll take on. If you can pour it without having to put rubber boots on, I'm all for it. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you do it wet like this, you get the rocks pushed down. Then you can come back in and make it look really pretty the second time. Sleep to it tonight. <laughs> I was telling Andrew that, you know, the TikTok thing about people find relaxing sounds and images. I'm pretty sure this is one of mine. Put a little relaxing music on it and play it.
Oh, thank you for going in there. No, oh, that's that's real nice of you. That's real good. Thank you. Thank you. Must have muddy paws. Good thing you're on vacation. Ah! You got me. The excitement continues on the home front here. Uh, as you saw by the drone footage, we don't have three phases yet, but at least the pool's been set. At least, well, one of them. They need to set the other pool across the road. Uh, that means that we can actually do a little bit of uh, entrance work. They got that pull up, but the one across the road still hasn't been redone. Power comes down the pull here. They trenched up the road, made the connection down here where we left that open for them. But in that time, we managed to get about three inches of rain. So it, a little late, Mother Nature, thank you, but it is what it is. However, things have gotten sloppy. I'm looking at you. So they still need to come back and set the transformer, uh, but at least we can uh, take the frame off now. There we go. Now I gotta haul in some rock and get that backside braced up there. So definitely should do that before. Well, it depends. Either I got dad's got some rock down there that I can steal. Because there's a chance that that combine might be rolling today. So I don't know. We'll figure that out here. And if we look here, would you just stay out of the mud? Come on, bud. Come on, was that necessary? Now his paws are on it. What do you think? Does this look like it'll work? You stay off of me. So the electrical boys, we're back out here. Look at that, 3,100 pounds is what this thing weighs. So it's still, it's still uh, not live, so I can do this. That's what that looks like. A whole bunch of zappity zap stuff right there. Woo Power must go around the backside inside of it and stub out to these. This is where they'll all go into. Um, and then again, there's the service parts. There's where the meter will be. Yeah. I like it. Looks pretty professional if you ask me. So if you look at that hillside right there, that thing's been chewing on some corn. Which means that your guys' harvest videos are coming up here real soon. Again, a whole bunch of links down in the description to uh, maybe a video about learning about three-phase, all the GSI resources that I've learned about. The grain bin needs to get built, and then on top of it, grain view is gonna be installed into that third grain bin down there. Oh yeah. And then this big improvement deal going on here. So we'll uh, see you in the next one. We still got a whole bunch more fun videos coming on. Like this grain build needs to get bit. This grain build. Yeah.
This grain bin needs to keep the gab.